Hello, I'm Chris Menard. In today's Excel video, I'm going to take a look at the unique function. I'm going to take a look at the sort function. Both of those functions are dynamic array functions, which means they're only available with a Microsoft 365 subscription. This does work on the Mac if you have the 365 subscription. I'm going to do seven different items with these, so this is going to be a great video. I love these two functions. So here we go. I've got a list of customers. I picked the largest employers in my state, in case you're wondering. I made up some order dates and I made up some invoice amounts. I want to know who are the unique customers. So equals unique. I'm going to simply highlight the entire range, which is A2 to A33 and press enter. There is the unique function. In case you're wondering, I had a2 to A33, so that's 32 customer orders. Down in the bottom right, you can see the word count says 15. There they are. There's the unique function. Come down here in case you've never seen this. Notice it's grayed out, which means you can't delete it, which is kind of cool. But you could delete it from cell E2. So there's unique. Here's sort, and then I'm going to join them together. So I'm going to sort all these, A2 to A33. One more time, A2 to A33, there they are sorted. I intentionally put this data in this way in column A. I put every company in at least twice. I believe I've got the University of Georgia in there multiple times just to mix it up. So there's sort and there is unique right there. So now I'm going to combine them together doing sort and unique. I'll put them right here just to keep this easy. So I'm going to do equals sort first, followed by unique, still highlight them. That is it. So I should get exactly what I have up above in column E, except this time they should be sorted. And they are just a test. I see 15. So they're sort and unique. Now, one little item about unique. The unique function, technically, we've got the word unique and we've got the word distinct. Technically, even though I'm using the unique function, these are what's called distinct values. If you want to see true unique, a true unique is someone that appears once and only once. That is considered unique. So let's do that right over here. Equals unique. Same range. This is so cool that this function does this. Does this comma. I'm on the second argument. I don't need it. It says by column. Comma. Here we go. The last argument. If you notice the word true. Says return items that appear exactly once. That is really what unique is. Before I press enter, I'm hoping I get a pound calc error message because no one is in this data just one time. And that is why I have that error message right there. I'm going to pick on Kennesaw State University because everyone's in here twice, twice, two times or more. So I'm going to change Kennesaw State University in cell A30 to Chris Menard Training. So Chris Menard Training is going to be in here once, but also Kennesaw State University was in here twice. Now they're in here once. I should get two over there in column I. And I do. Again, I'm going to click on that so you can see that function up there. That is truly unique right there. The other ones are distinct, even though the function is called unique. Really cool that they let you do that though. Next item, I'm going to do a unique with a concatenate. So this example, I still want to see unique, but I want to join them together. So let me do one item. Control C. There, now I'm good. Here we go. I want to see unique items, but I want to see last name, comma, space, first name. So I'm going to use the unique function. 
I want to see the last name first, so I selected B39 to B42. Concatenator join ampersand, double quotes, comma, spacebar, double quotes, join the first name. I should end up here with just three records because I'm in here twice intentionally. And I ought to have Menard, comma, space, Chris. There you go. So that is the unique function with concatenate right there. What's next? I'm going to do a sort unique on two columns. This is the last one, actually. Here we go. Again, I've got last name, comma, first name. I'm going to do sort and unique, but I want to sort by specific field. So equals sort unique. Highlight all the data this time. Because I'm not trying to do a concatenate. I just want it all. So A48 through B53. I'm done with the unique part comma, I'm back on sort. It's asking me, what is it you want to sort by? I've got two columns selected. I want to sort by the second column, which is last name, comma, what order do you want to sort by? Ascending, A to Z, or descending, Z to A. I want to do the last name ascending. That is it right there. So look over in column F, I got Arnold, Menard, Smith, Wilson. And I intentionally put myself in here multiple times again, if you look over in column A and B. In case you're wondering, I'm going to edit this function. In case you're wondering, hey, can you sort in descending? It is a negative one. I know it's hard to see that. But now it's Wilson, Smith, Menard, Arnold. There you go. I love the unique function and I love the sort function. One last item. I do suggest if you're going to use these functions, change your data range into a table, home, format as table, or control T. It doesn't matter. Does your table have headers? Yes, it does. The reason is if you come down here and you add somebody, the ABCDEF company, there it is in sort. There it is in sort and unique. And trust me, it's right there also. So change your data range into a table. And when you add information, it picks it up using these dynamic array functions. If you have any questions, let me know. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Any comments also let me know. Thank you. Have a great day.